on this week's curry shed recipe we have a delicious chicken vindaloo. Having turned up the gas to a medium to high setting and allowing the pan to get to temperature we first add some seasoned oil. Stirring in the pan ensures the heat is distributed within the oil quickly. Although this pan is well used, it's not one of my favourites and it's not very well balanced and has a tendency to topple over at times. This is something you should consider when buying a new one. First in the pan is the garlic ginger paste. Now this requires stirring continuously making sure not to burn at this stage of the cooking process. Once the sizzling is subsiding, we can add in the tomato paste, again stirring continuously. From experience I can tell that the pan's contents are not quite as hot as what they should be, so I will continue to cook the paste a little longer. For this recipe I'm using six ingredients from the spice tray to get that typical vindaloo flavour. And these consist of mixed powder, Kashmiri chilli powder, extra hot chilli powder, methi leaves, cardamom powder and freshly ground black pepper. As usual I will add a small amount of the base gravy to allow the spices to cook through and prevent them from burning and allow them to sizzle fry at a high temperature in the pan. This one action alone is probably one of the most fundamental and key techniques to master. Get this right and you'll maximise the release of the oils into your curry. This can only be done in oil that has reached a high temperature. Just ensure you are not burning the spices at this stage. We can now add in the pre-cooked chicken. With a full ladle of the base gravy added, stir it around in the pan and try to coat all of the chicken with the spiced gravy mixture. Stirring and scraping the pan will prevent any of the spices from burning on the edges and this is another key technique in getting the caramelised gravy back into your curry. That's looking good, now just leave it alone for a while. Very finely chopped coriander can now be added and stirred in. Now some say that Vindaloo does not have any coriander. It does, it just is not very noticeable at the end if you have cooked it properly. I don't think there has ever been a definitive answer as to the origins of the Vindaloo curry but many people believe that the name Vindaloo is derived from the use of vinegar and aloo, the Indian name for potato. Well this recipe does include both so I will now add some malt vinegar and I suppose any will do but this is my preference and also a little bit of uh, sea salt was going in there.
Again, leaving it for a while will ensure all the base gravy caramelizes. And the telltale sign is when the oil content floats to the top. Tossing in a couple of pieces of fresh tomato and gently stir into the gravy. Can you see how much thicker it is becoming now the base gravy is caramelised? This also indicates to me that the water content has reduced and as you can see the oil has come to the surface. So we are now ready to add a further three quarter ladle of base gravy and gently stir it in. Try not to break up the pieces of chicken, which are now getting very tender. I'll just give it a good stir and then leave it alone once more. After a short while I will add a further quarter ladle of base gravy. The secret here is to add little and often, so not to cool down the pan too much and allow the caramelization to continue quicker. At this point I'm going to add some more garlic paste, just garlic this time, no ginger, plus a couple of shakes of Worcester sauce and red and green chilies to lift the heat levels and flavors, giving it all a quick stir to mix it all in. Turn down the heat to a medium heat and allow it to simmer more slowly. It may be somewhat boring but I prefer to show the curry being cooked in real time so you can see exactly what is happening and no secret ingredients are added while the camera is off. What you see is what you get. Every restaurant I have visited here in the southeast of England as well as some parts of North London have included parboiled potatoes. Some prefer them not to be added and I guess it must be a reasonable thing but I love them in a vindaloo. It adds more variety and texture and in my mind would be wrong not to include them. So in they go. Potatoes can break up fairly easily so give it all a gentle stir and scrape at this time and allow it all to heat through. This vindaloo is nearly ready but I prefer a slightly looser gravy so I'm going to finally add a further ladle of base gravy. I normally at this point add a pinch of garam masala as well. All that's required now is to allow it to bubble away until the oil rises, stirring very occasionally.
That looks about the right consistency and texture for Vindaloo. So I'll turn off the gas and dish it up. If you want to see more videos like this as they are released, please subscribe right now and hit that button and give me a big thumbs up and I'll see you on the next video.